Hey everybody, it's me, it's your buddy, Steve Simons, and we're back again with another Awesomers.com podcast episode, actually episode number 151, and uh, I'm happy today because I get to welcome who I consider the, the godfather of entrepreneurial podcasting, John Lee Dumas, did I get it right? I mean, if you think I'm the godfather, you should probably be able to pronounce my name, right? Oh, uh, you'd think so, yeah, I, I have a problem <laughs> with uh, reading, so tell me, <laughs> give me the right pronunciation. You nailed it. Oh, look at that. And I, I have to admit, I had, uh, I had some help uh, at the beginning. My, my listeners, uh, my regulars know that I only get about half the names right. Uh, I'm not that good. Uh, but JLD, if I may call you JLD, as your closest friends do, <laughs> sure. uh, I wonder if you could just tell us the formative moment. So everybody kind of knows you're, you're very um, prolific in podcasting. And they, they know about some of your accomplishments. And, and in the lead in, I've read in some of that stuff. but. Uh, you know, with all of the accomplishments, how did you get started? What was that, that spark that set the whole thing off? The spark was a, one of desire, desire as a consumer of podcasts, as somebody who listened to podcasts, who loved podcasts. I mean, I was working a job where I'd be driving a lot and I used to love the medium of podcasting. I just got it free, on-demand, targeted content. I mean, what's not to love about that? Now I could stop listening to Miley Cyrus every fourth song. I could stop listening to annoying commercials, you know, for 15 minutes out of 30. You know, I could stop listening to what they chose, whoever they is, to play, and I could be in charge. I could choose. I could press pause when I had to go into the bathroom at a subway store. I could, you know, just like pick it up the next morning if I wanted to and not miss a beat. And all of a sudden, it gave me complete control. So I, I knew the medium of podcasting was unbelievably special. I knew it was going to be discovered and it was going to grow and it was going to always have this special place in people's day. It's never going to be something you just sit around in a circle singing Kumba, Kumbaya listening to podcasts. That's never going to happen. But when you go for a run, when you're driving the car by yourself, walking your dog, folding laundry, those are the times that you're going to listen to podcasts because it allows you to consume something you're enjoying while, hey, you're doing something you may not enjoy so much. Now, all of a sudden, washing the dishes isn't quite as bad as it used to be. And uh, it's just a fact of the matter. And so I was listening to podcasts over and over again on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And then I said, you know what the perfect show would be? A daily podcast that interviews successful entrepreneurs. Now, let me qualify that. What the perfect show for me would be as a listener. Right. That's a show that I wanted. So I went to find a daily podcast that interviewed successful entrepreneurs and lo and behold, it did not exist. And I took a little cue from Gandhi and said, why not be the change that I actually want to see in the world? And that led to the launch of Entrepreneurs on Fire. And I was not good as a host. Luckily, I was able to get some guests on that could carry the show for quite some time. And it was a fun learning curve and doing a daily show mean, meant I was putting in the reps. I was getting a little bit better every single day. And now you and I are talking 2,200 interviews later, 80 million listens later, $16 million in total revenue later, seven years later. It's been a pretty fun journey. Well, when you hit your stride, let me know, because uh, uh, I think that sounds fine, but uh, you're not quite there yet. No, of course. A couple uh, years. Ask me a couple years. It's an amazing accomplishment. I love the fact that, that you just saw it, and I think the lesson for the Oscars out there listening is, you know, you saw something, you figured out kind of your own twist on it, and you went for it, and you talk about taking action on your podcast. I, I was introduced to it about a year ago, and I think that's a, a pretty uh, normal part of your belief system, right? You, you focus, you're consistent. What, is there a particular piece of the, you know, the secret sauce that you care to share with the awesomers out there? What everybody misses is the micro niche part. You know, everybody can work hard. Everybody, you know, can put in the reps. Everybody can be consistent. Not that everybody is, but those are all components that people can do. Um, and the problem is they mix all those things together with just this very broad, vague topic. Like I'm going to interview entrepreneurs. Guess what? That was a micro niche back in 2012. Everybody and their mother literally is doing it in 2019. So no longer a micro niche, not even a niche. It's just the thing that every single person in the world is doing. So the secret sauce is, what are you going to do that's different? Let's call a spade a spade right now. You're basically asking me the exact same questions 
that I get asked on almost every single interview. How is this different than any other interview that I've ever done? Well, the answer is your audience. Your audience may never have heard of me. Your audience may have no idea who I am, and you know that. And if you've done your work and you've micro niched down into a special place where you have a very core specific audience and you know how to serve them, then you're doing right by them. And so that's where you're gonna win, is when you're all those things we mentioned in the beginning, but you also are standing for something where you're also niching down into a void that's not being properly served. Nobody was serving daily interviews with successful entrepreneurs. So guess what? I was the best daily podcast host interviewing entrepreneurs day one. I was also the worst. I was the only. How are you going to be the best from day one? Be the only person there. And it's not like you're going into a brand new field. You're starting in a field that everybody's killing. Then you're niching down, niching down, niching down until you're in that same vertical, but just in a little micro niche that nobody's thought it worth dedicating all of their time into. Or on the flip side, and this is the same exact thing, but just a different twist to it, Maybe you're going to take two things that you're really passionate about and combine them together. So you might be top 25% of the world in yoga and top 25% of the world in your knowledge about veganism. You're not going to win because you're not going to win just being, you know, in the top 25%. The people in the top 1% win. But where you can win is if you become the yogi vegan, the person that combines these two things that you're 25 and 25, but now because you're one of the only people that's actually combining those things in a completely focused and meaningful way. Now you can win that micro niche. Well, I love a good Venn diagram for the Aspers out there. You know, it's those two specialties and how they overlap that makes you unique right there in the middle. And so our audience, uh, JLD is largely focused on brand builders on Amazon. So they, they started their business on Amazon and they're building their own brand. And that's something that you've kind of done with some of your products. It, you know, in our, our last minutes, we're doing a lightning round session today. Any, any words of wisdom that you would leave with those Amazon sellers who are out there trying to build their, their business, that, you know, as a cornerstone on Amazon? Well, you know, words of wisdom would be this is like, let's talk about you, the host for a second. You know, you could have just said, hey, I'm going to serve anybody that sells anything. You know, that would be very broad. Instead, you said, you know what, I'm going to focus on branding still kind of broad, but you know, you're definitely now focusing into something more, but he said, you know what, now I'm going to actually take that a next niche down. I'm going to focus on branding for Amazon sellers. You know, obviously it's the biggest platform out there, but it's still just one specific platform that now you can focus on. So now all of a sudden, like if anybody's searching and they're like, you know, I'm really looking to help my brand on Amazon and then they find you and like your whole brand is just screaming. I do branding for Amazon sellers how are you not going to win over just a branding company or over just a marketing company? Like that's a perfect example of why niching down wins period. End of story. And I've, I do have a lot of experience on Amazon myself. I sell currently four items, uh, physical products on Amazon, the freedom journal, which is all about accomplishing your number one goal in a hundred days, the mastery journal, which is about fo um, crushing productivity, discipline, and focus in a hundred days. Uh, the podcast journal, which is about creating uh, and launching your podcast in 100 days, and the 100 day gold journal, which kind of is co a combination of the freedom and the mastery journal kind of into one big thing. So, I've spent a lot of time on Amazon, and the one thing that I've really realized that's helped set us apart is going above and beyond, you know, for every single person that purchases our products. You know, we sell you know, hundreds and hundreds of these journals every single week. So we don't have this crazy um, volume by any stretch, but you know, we do move a lot of products and these are very high end, $39, $49 journals, high, high profits. Cause you know, they cost five or $6 to make five or six more dollars to get to Amazon, five or six more dollars to sell through Amazon. So there's a lot of leftover there for, for, for the profit side of things. Um, but even with all of that, we say, how can we go the extra step? And so, you know, we've, gone ahead and invested some of those profits into services that actually allow us to email every single person that buys. And that email, you know, is directing them back to a special page that we have, which is essentially giving them a gift. Um, and that gift is, is, is like just expanding upon the journal, like for instance, a calendar to go along with the journal. So it's a very um, complimentary gift that makes sense. 
And when they then receive that gift and then they, they share about it, it's then that third level now. They've got the email, they've got the gift, or they, they asked for, they filled the form for the gift, now they've got the gift. Then we say, oh, by the way, if you're really happy now that you're a couple of weeks in with the journal, we would love an honest reading and review because those verified purchaser rating reviews are everything. And so now with our Freedom Journal, by using that strategy, we have over 500 five-star reviews for that kind of niche product. That's a really hard number to get to. I mean, you have some massive companies and products that don't have nearly that many reviews on much you know, higher quantity and um, volume products because they're just not taking those simple steps. So that's been a huge thing for us to continue to rank the best, to continue to have the credibility because people go to those ratings and reviews and they see that and keep it and keep making that happen. I love it. Well, listen, awesomers, uh, it, you know, to kind of summarize that, I love the old school, hey, what if you serve the customer, right? You know, what if you did something that uh, engenders uh, trust and credibility and, and the long-term relationship? And then if you do that over and over, it builds a really good brand. And I know that you have that. Uh, all the entrepreneurs out there, make sure that you go listen to uh, the Entrepreneurs on Fire podcast. It's been around forever, and uh, I, I still am, you know, 1,500 episodes from nearing, you know, I probably listened to, you know, th hundreds, but not thousands, so I've got a long ways to go. Thank you again for joining me, JLD. I really appreciate your time. It was a blast. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. See you guys.